Wednesdays with Beyond the Northern Wall, a YouTube live talk show with myself, Kayla Malari, as the host. Now, I do want to apologize for last week's episode because I didn't check my mic and there was a lot of feedback in that episode. So please let me know in the chat if there's feedback on this episode. I'm going to be a little bit farther away because I tend to project really well. I'm loud, is what I'm trying to say. But if you're just joining us this week and you weren't here last week, what I've been going over is the history of CORE, a brief and annotated history of the CORE dance crew by myself, one of the co-founders and the current CEO of the CORE dance crew. Now, if you haven't seen the last episode, that's okay. You can always go back and watch it on our YouTube channel. But today we are going to start where we left off. We open at the close. I have my notes here because I don't remember what we have done, human beings. There's so many things that we have done as CORE. So last week we ended on we just finished AX so we just finished the AX performance of Attack on Titan our very first performance at Anime Expo with our Attack on Titan set now if you took NJ's class last night which was super awesome and you can catch it on our IGTV but she in her Q&A someone asked um, about what got her into cosplay and dance and she actually brought up a memory that I've clearly forgotten, but then remembered in the in the moment. I don't know if I said this last week, but AX 2014 was not the first time I had performed at AX, and it's not the first time Soulmate has performed at AX. We did go with our collegiate team years before, but <laughs> here's why I don't count it as my first time at AX, because I never made it into the convention building. Never even set foot in front of LA Convention Center never saw a badge never anything we performed at one of the after parties but this is when the like this was way way back in the day when ax wasn't as big as it is now and the after parties was in one of the hotels in their hotel block so i remember when we got there they were like we're gonna get you guys badges and blah 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 and they didn't get us badges or anything but i remember like parking somewhere and then going with friends not to the convention center like the convention center was this way and we walked that way down the street to a hotel where we danced in the ballroom for one of the AX dances. Now, with that being said, it was super fun because it was the first time I'd seen a whole group of people in like full cosplay and I was so excited and and it was great. And um, that was technically the first time I performed at an AX. Fun fact, if you've ever seen Magic Mike 
in Las Vegas. I know this is so random. If you ever seen Magic Mike in Las Vegas, there's a token Asian Magic Mike dancer. That's my friend and soulmate's friend, Pat Packing. He's amazing. He's totally famous. He danced with us back on our collegiate team, and he was like one of the first people. He, I drove with him and some other corpsmen in his car to go to that AX. Um, so if you haven't seen Magic Mike live in Vegas, it's not there anymore. But he was one of the iconic people for it. I say that because he actually comes up in the story later on. So anyways, fast forward back to last week. We just finished our Attack on Titan set at Anime Expo. Yeah, Anime Expo is my weird little um, accent that I have. So now me and Soulmate at AX, if you remember, we had a talk before the masquerade even started and we looked at each other and that was to me when core began when at the time survey core dance group that's really where core began because we talked about it and i remember saying to her like i will do this as long as you do this like this isn't something that we're gonna do and then like pass on once we're done with it no 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 this lasts as long as you're here and i'm here and we are here together and we are soulmates and we're doing it together as a unit and so we agreed we are going to do this <laughs> We didn't expect anyone to really know who we were, which no one did. No one knows who we are. Nobody knows who you are. But um, that <laughs> summer is my favorite performance because, and it's, oh, it's kind of amazing. So this is my, my, one of my hands down favorite memories of being on core is we were contacted because they, by these two women who saw us at AX and we met with them at a Seven Leaves Cafe and they wanted us to perform at their wedding, at their wedding, at their wedding. It was a lovely lesbian wedding and they wanted us to perform an Attack on Titan set at their wedding. And me and Soulmate were so excited. We're like, oh my gosh, that's like, it's like really random for us to, oh, did it just stop? Did my stream just stop? Sorry, hold on, pause something's happening beep, 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 beep. I'm buffering on the stream my bad it says good connection Oh, well, some people are having problems, some people are not. My bad. My stream health says it's good. Um, so just watch it back. It'll buffer eventually. But, okay. Anyways, so sorry about that. Oh, uh, where was I? What was I even talking about? Oh, lesbian wedding. So we were asked to be part of this lesbian wedding. And it was probably the sweetest thing we were ever asked. Because who the heck were we? Um... It was sweet and then we were so excited because they wanted to they wanted us to, to perform as Attack on Titan and in our uniforms and everything and they're like to be our entertainment for the wedding we're like cool. The one thing we could not fulfill that they asked of us was that they wanted Thomas um, who if you remember was our naked man on stage supposed to be Titan Aaron but was really just a naked man running around on stage. They wanted him to uh, walk, run through the ceremony, and then for us to come out as the survey corps and kill him. That was just the one thing we couldn't, we couldn't agree to. Simply because we were like, you know what, your wedding is about you. I'm not gonna make it about this naked man who, you know what, just is running through your wedding. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to read, read your guys' comments. comments. Yeah, if you can refresh your page. Um, let me know if, if, if it's not working for you guys. My bad. All right. Yay, my soulmate's got me on my back. Um, okay, so we did the lesbian wedding, and it was so much fun, but we didn't have all of the normal people in there. Like, Rawson wasn't available for it, and Adam wasn't available for it. So this is the first time we, like, switched around characters. And actually, Liz, who played Armin, ended up playing Aaron. This is an inception of characters right now, guys. And then Lauren who played Ilsa Langer, ended up, Ilsa, this is how in-depth we are with characters. She ended up playing Levi. 
and I stayed Hanji, soulmate stayed Sasha, and we got to perform at their wedding, and it was so much fun. There's a lot of, like, random footage of us in this ballroom just having fun. That was at the wedding, and we, like, got to party with the wedding party. Like, they had a photo booth with anime backgrounds in it, and we got to know the family, and we got to hang out with everyone. We did the cha-cha slide with them. It was so much fun. It was hands down one of the best performances ever because it was just us being nerds with other nerds on this beautiful happy day we were like sitting there listening to the speech from the dad of the bride of one of the brides and we were like oh my god this is beautiful so it was great because core the survey core was opening up literally new doors for us and to new friends um, after the lesbian wedding we did i don't know if somebody remembers this but we did dancer palooza i don't know what that is it was in the Long Beach Convention Center, and it was something. I remember there were dancer booths. It was like a dancer convention, and there was a performance. We performed something. I actually found that video of our rehearsal from it. So make sure you guys check out our series on our YouTube channel, which is um, that one time I was reincarnated as a throwback. That rehearsal video will be on there because I was watching it on my laptop. I revived my laptop, guys. This is my lovely, it's chunky. Look at my lovely laptop. This is from years ago. I revived this thing and I was looking through it and I found a bunch of old core footage on it. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh. So that's gonna show up. So we did Dancer Palooza and then we're like, okay, we really wanna do more of this convention scene thing, like the convention world, but we don't really know much about it. Me and Soulmate were total noobs to it. So we're like, okay, let's do something that we do know. Let's go do more um, community performances. And because it was the end of the year, because it's getting towards Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas time, that means it's maxed out time. And maxed out time means it's competing time. Now here's the thing. Here's a little side story for you. Not side story, side knowledge. Now we weren't about the competing world. We weren't about getting trophies or placing. But here's the thing. If you wanna really establish yourself just like you have credits, just like you go to school to get a degree, just like you have a resume, you wanna establish yourself with credentials so that people know you're not just, you know, two-step Bob on the corner, just dancing for fun, that you have some credibility. So us going back to Maxed Out and trying for first place was us showing that, you know, we were serious about dance, that we're not just a bunch of two-step Bobs coming together, that we wanted to be a professional dance company. So this was probably, this was the year, this was the year, 2014, maxed out 2014, 2015, 2014, sure. Bollywood set. Now, okay, I have so much to say about Bollywood set, so sorry if this gets a little long, because I love Bollywood set. Now, the dance community started in the Filipino cultural clubs and in colleges so you have like I remember coming in and I'm like why are all these people called Barkata modern Kaba modern Pac modern NSE modern everyone's a modern like why is everyone modern and people said well they're called modern because they all came from these Filipino cultural night clubs still didn't really answer my question but I, I now I knew modern was the common denominator amongst all of them um and so we were what am I talking about? Oh, so Filipino culture nightclubs meant like I'm Filipino. I am full fledged Filipino. And there's all of these Filipinos in the dance community. Like we're a dime a dozen. And then within that, you have all these other Asian cultures that got to really find their representation in the dance community. You have Vietnamese, you have Chinese, you have Japanese, you have Korean, like, like all these different um, ethnicities. And then on top of that, you also have white and black communities. You have Hispanic communities. But what you didn't really have was you didn't see a lot of Middle Eastern, you didn't see a lot of South Asian, and you definitely didn't see any Indian or Sri Lankan people. And so that's why Soulmate was so important as a human being, because she was like, I'm Sri Lankan, I love Bollywood movies, I love my culture, and she made me really love her culture too. Like when we lived together in Zamzamzia, whatever year that was, we ended up staying up late and watching Bollywood movies all night. And Bollywood movies last forever, you guys, but they're so epic and beautiful. I think I watched one movie that lasted four hours and I cried majority of the time. And so um, when it came to deciding on our set, 
soulmate was like, I, I, you know, she really wanted to do a Bollywood set. And I was like, I really want to do a Bollywood set. So I said, let's do a Bollywood set. So we did it and we got to really represent something that, that was her, something that was so unique. And so we delved into it. You know, she looked at, uh, we did a little bit of it in the past sets, like our first set at Maxed Out 2013. The opening was Hull Cut Joani, which was um, a song that she always wanted to dance to, a Bollywood song she always wanted to dance to. And then actually the iconic move in Closer where we're on the floor and we like hop like this in Zero to Hero. We get on the floor and we do this and the crowd goes wild. That's from a Bollywood movie. It's from a Bollywood movie where the guys are playing badminton and they like, up and hop and hop and hit the badminton thingy with the, the little birdie with the racket. And we saw that move and we took it and we did it on stage and people like freaked out. So we've always had hints of Bollywood and everything that we've done. And so we wanted to just really just go out there with it. So Soulmate designed the costumes for that. She was like, this is the, the uh, I like, I can't even remember the terminology for it because I'm so excited. It was like the Lenka, I think. And then she taught us like what it was to have a bindi, the kind of bindis you have, what they represent. And she designed the costumes, she designed the colors, the colors that we wanted. And that was actually the first um, skirt that we, like the first costume that we made. We didn't sew yet. Remember, we're not sewers yet. None of us own sewing machines yet, except for like, like NJ who actually sews. But as a company, we didn't sew yet. So what we did is we designed the circle skirts and we cut out the fabric and one of our dancers, Kim, who was part of like our board at the time, her mom sewed. So she helped us sew those skirts together. And then we made like the long scarves for the guys. And there's actually one, what was it, soulmate? It's a uh, Dilboli Hadipa is the movie where the main girl does this great dance scene where she is the guy. She plays the guy and then another girl plays the main girl. And it is one of my favorite dance scenes because it is so full out. Bangra is so full out. And I loved her characterization. And I said, what if, can we do that for our closer? Like, can I turn into the guy for our closer? And soulmate said what she always says in the most eloquent, eloquent, eloquent way possible, which is yes. So we, <laughs> we did Bollywood set. And honestly, if you look at that set, I think that's the biggest we've had our company. There was a lot of us on stage and trying to block and choreograph that was admittedly very hard because we weren't used to that many of us on stage. Um, there's a lot of good moments that happen in there, but there's the moment where that moment when soulmate put up her hands and she leans back and all the girls come on stage, the audience freaked out. Like they legitimately freaked out because she had so many friends in the audience, so many friends who supported her and, and loved her as a person and as an icon. And you just got to see her. She's beginning to live her best Bollywood life. And I love listening to the crowd. They freak out when she starts it and then the girls come out. And then that is just a strong girls moment where all the girls are on stage in their beautiful skirts and their perfect Bollywood hair and all their gold on their ankles and their wrists. And they just do a girls number. And that for me is one of our, our biggest things because like talk about representation, talk about what our mission statement is of representation, which is not only cultural representation, but this female representation of strong women on stage. Now here's the thing, while that's happening, I am not on stage <laughs> for the strong female moment. I am off stage changing out of my skirt, putting on pants and Tobias Dong, our Berthold Hoover, our Colossal Titan, he is now a doctor, y'all. He is, side note, saving all your lives during COVID. So wear a mask. Don't put him in danger or Bevy in danger or Eddie in danger any more than people already have. Take care of our doctors and our medical professionals, please. Anyways, Dr. Dong is holding this mustache and he's helping me put spirit gum on it so I can put it on my face so I have a mustache on my face because that's what she did in the Bollywood movie. And our friends are in, I don't know if it was Griminals or Kings and Queens, but our friends are in the wings because they're going to be up next and they're watching. And Pat Packin is one of the people and he's in the wings and I remember him looking over and go, oh my God, of course you would. <laughs> when he's seen me put this mustache on, which is kind of, the phrase that a lot of people say. Most recently, it's Nifa. She will look at me and just be like, oh, of 
Of course you would. Either that or Joseph will just be like, oh. actually, Nifa, Joseph, and Rostin usually sigh when I do something, but in the meantime, hello, hi, babe. But in the meantime, babe, I'm in the middle of a stream. What the heck? Okay, sir. Okay, yeah, babe, stop. <laughs> Thank you for the food. Okay, I said that he sighs, I'm sighing now. I, I was going to say, oh God, I was going to say that usually when I do something and he walks away when I finally talk to him, <laughs> when I usually do something, you, Nifa, or Joseph usually just like sigh, but then like on the other end, my sister and Soma are usually like, do the thing, do the thing. So you've blurred it. Look at what you've done. You've blurred it. Wait, no, it's not that. It's you. God, now I got to like reset the focus. I'm now I'm blurry and it's his fault. Anyways, get away. So Bollywood set. <clears throat> oh my God. You can't just open the door like that, sir, man. Yeah. Focus is so off. Let me fix this focus. Hi y'all. I'm fixing the autofocus on my thing. Cause there's not like a thing that autofocus fixes. Is it happening? Anyways, I'm going to continue talking to you guys in this low thing while the focus fixes. <laughs> So we're doing Bollywood set. Now I am wearing a mustache on my face and my friends have looked at me and said, of course you would. And I said, of course I would. I would wear a mustache on my face. Why is it still unfocused? Weird. Eh. Here's the thing with this. Can oh, I have fixed it. <laughs> so we're going back on stage. Now, if you watch the entrance of the boys on Bollywood set, Please watch Goge. Goge is the greatest human in the world. He's going in so full out to the point where you don't notice that there is a girl in the middle of these boys and I come forward and you hear the audience take a second before they realize, oh my gosh, that's Kayla wearing a mustache in the center. And we did the Bollywood set and, and we ended with like these, the, the token Bhangra moves that Somi taught us. And when we ended that set, it felt good. Especially because we like, we, we got to do a cultural set that represented one of the founders and she got to live her best life and we took it to a mainstream hip hop competition and it did well. We ended up winning second at that performance with something that was so innately ours. Like even though we were there to compete, we weren't looking to really, like of course you go in there and you're like, I want to get first place, but we also really wanted a platform so that we could do a Bollywood set for everyone to see. And then it won second place. So that's just like something you can put in your pocket and feel really good about. Um, then after that, we were going into the new year and this is the year, oh yeah, this is the year we did funk set. So after we did Bollywood set, we ended up doing funk set and funk set was supposed to be, supposed to, I don't know what it turned into, but funk set is when we were supposed to show all the styles we can do. So we really wanted to showcase that we weren't just chore like we didn't just do choreography for the sake of doing choreography. We weren't just technicians when it came to movement that we have training. So we added whacking, we added locking, we added ISO, we added jazz, we added uh, a little bit of our lyrical technical, and then we added tap. This was the first time we did tap on stage. Now we didn't have a sweetener track for the tap, so you can't really hear it, but we are legit tapping. And it was so exciting because that fusion, that stage is hollow underneath. So we got to really like let our sounds ring and doing that tech with the taps was so awesome. Here's the thing about why we, why funk set is so interesting because it was supposed to be an all style set for us. For some reason, it turned into the Zoolander set and Andrew, our token, fill him in if we need an acting spot, became Zoolander. And that's why you see the uh, gas pump at the beginning and the orange mocha frappuccinos and jitterbug plays because it was Zoolander set. I don't know how, I think I mixed it and then we just decided. Um, here's the thing. We told Andrew he was Zoolander and we had like token moments. If you watch it, we take red to highlight different moments. So like the Whackers have red gloves and for our 
rhythmic gymnast Cat Cat, she goes across with a red ribbon. And then Koki comes out with a red theraband to do his extension. And then Kim has a red fan for the jazz part. And then the tappers have red laces on their shoes. And then with, when Jason comes out, he wears a red windbreaker for his breaking moment. Um, for Andrew, who was Zoolander, no one told him to do costume changes. No one told him to make costumes. He just kind of did that the day of the performance. So every time he came on stage, everyone was just like, why Why do you have a new outfit? I mean, they're great, but when did you change? In that same fashion of no one told you to do that, when we reiterated Funk Set at UB later that year, Jason had lines and you hear him say, he does like the break dancing battle. Here, my new chair squeaking, it's like a new car. Um, he does the break dance battle and then and then Andrew comes out as Zoolander and Jason goes, who's this guy? And when we watch that back, all of a sudden, who gave you lines? Like, who told you to say that? And he was just like, ha, ha, ha. Which is just a very token of Jason. That's going to be a thing that he does for the rest of our lives. But here's the thing. So Fusion, Fusion set. We do <laughs> funks. If you watch Andrew, he jumps off stage at one point. And there's <laughs> these giant hanging speakers and these wires handing down. He decides, I'm gonna jump off stage. As he jumps off stage, a wire literally clotheslines him. He chokes himself. The speaker goes crazy. He almost took down the whole thing. And we're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we're gonna get in so much trouble. What also happened, and this is why I was trying to remember, as I'm going through like all the sets, I'm trying to remember, why don't I really remember Fusion that year? It's because unfortunately our lovely Cat Cat, who's like my, my, my girl, my little baby daughter, she was our rhythmic gymnast who went across. As she finished off her walkovers, she kind of slipped on a ribbon and she's had reconstructive ACL for five ever. And so something clicked in her knee. And so she was, the minute she goes down an injury, she's backstage, she is crying, her legs stretched out. I'm with her in a second. And I remember at the end of the performance, I'm just sitting with her for, for about, about like how many, many teams, teams are performing. performing. And Bev is there too, and Bucket Hat. And we're like, I'm asking her like, are you okay? What do you need? And she's like, I don't know. And of course the fusion, I, Soulmate takes the rest of the team and they go out to go watch the, the show, the rest of the competition. And we're there with the fusion team and we're like, what do you need? And she goes, I. I, I think they, they're like, I think we need to call an ambulance. And at first she's saying, no, I don't want to call an ambulance, but we're like, we have no other way to help you. So me and Bev and Bucket Hat end up going with Cat Cat and we spend all of Fusion in the emergency room, which was, could have been sad, but like she started to feel better after a while. We were just in the emergency room for a really long time. And it was like our, we ended up just having fun, the four of us. Like she was, she felt bad. She's like, I'm keeping you guys from the competition. We're like, no, of course we're going to stay with you. And we just ended up talking and, and playing games and having fun. Uh, and we like, of course, the team was asking like, is Cat Cat okay? What are the updates? And we're updating them the whole time. And she eventually was able to get everything sorted out and taken care of for her knee. And that was, that was Fusion. Now we were doing Funks again at UB. And UB was a lot more fun because I got to, not a lot more fun, but I got to spend more time with the team after we did our, that was the iconic tech. That was the best tech we've ever did because we had, we were just exhibition. Sorry, I just talked through a burp. Ew, gross. Um, we had already done this set before, so when we got on stage to do the tech, we were just running it. And the team was just having so much fun. I remember just going around filming everyone on my phone. People are laughing in the wings. It's like the shot where like she, she's dancing and you see like Eddie and Hidalgo and Thomas are just like hyping him up from the wings and we're just laughing. And then there's a part where like Rostin and Bucket Hat at Uptown Funk, they go to the front and they just decide, we're gonna see if we can do the whole closer screaming. And everyone's just having a grand old time. And that was our tech. And then after tech, a bunch of us just went out into downtown Riverside, which is so beautiful. And we like ate together and we had fun together. And that was, I, no one caught it on camera, but that was like Steve's iconic scare of me out in downtown Riverside. And then it was time to perform. Here's the thing, my sister, was supposed to be there per, to perform. She wasn't there for tech, but because she had an audition in LA because she's a working dancer in LA. When I tell you she got to that stage by the skin of her teeth, I am telling you they were announcing us as she runs backstage through, because you have the, you wait on deck and then you go into the hole and then you go backstage and then you're on stage. We're all like holding her outfits. She literally 
pulls up in the car. They're like the survey core dance group. She pulls up in the car and she like runs backstage and she's just shedding clothes as she's going and she's like getting on her costume as we're walking and we decided everyone walk on stage as slow as you can like set as slow as you can so we all trickle on stage like kind of one at a time like are you dressed yet she the music starts and she barely buttoned her pants like it was amazing it was amazing the timing that she made oh she was there for tech she was there for tech and then she left for an audition and then she came back in time for the actual performance it was amazing and that's why like when i say that it could be worse with costume changes i'm referring to like my sister literally shedding clothes and then just popping on stage and doing the set perfectly like that is a professional so that was awesome so that was the end of our collegiate run for the year. Now we're getting to summer again. Summer is coming around the corner and me and Soulmate have been thinking about summer this whole time. The entire time we're doing Funk Set, after, right after we were done with Bollywood Set, we were thinking like, okay, we did AX at summer. We want to do AX again. And it was a big masquerade stage. So what do we, let's take something new. Let's, let's not just do an anime. Let's take something that, that we make, that we make solely for ourselves, that's totally unique to us. And the, the namesake of this show was born, well, not the namesake, but the concept of the show was born over a coffee break. Um, I'm, I'm remembering it right now. We were at Starbucks and Soulmate's eating Madeline's and we are trying to figure out what to do for this new show that we want to take to AX. And Beyond the Northern Wall centered around one singular idea. And that one singular idea, is he here? Oh, he's here. One singular idea, you guys. Me and Soulmate thought, what if Jean Kirstein ended up in the world of My Little Pony? So this sir, this this ratty, like he is a, he's a, you are, you are so alarming. I'm gonna put you, you're just aggressive as a human being. That's where Beyond the Northern Wall started, was what if Jean Kirstein ended up in the world of My Little Pony? And from there, we're like, okay, well, what if we just took, like, the whole 104th? And we took the whole 104th, and they all ended up in, like, different anime worlds. And we're like, okay, well, then how do we tie this all together? Okay, well, what if, what if Hanji and Levi lead the 104th on an expedition, and they go... And they go through all the anime worlds. And then we were thinking of everyone's anime worlds. And we're like, oh, Adam has to end up in Dragon Ball Z because he's just an angry child. Of course he does. And then we're like, Sasha, would, oh, she'd be slice of life because that's so Sasha. She's just like, she's just so chill and whatnot. And then we're like, oh my gosh, we have to have Free in there. So so we'll have, I was going to say Koki, that's not Connie. We'll have Connie be in the world of Free because he'd be like, what is going on here? And then we're going to have... Sailor Moon, but we're gonna have Mikasa in Sailor Moon because she's so not a magical girl. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, and then in the most aggressive world, we'll put Armin. So we'll put Armin with all of the fighters. We'll put him with Naruto, with Tokyo Ghoul, with uh, Akame Ga Kill, and Armin will be wearing the outfit from Kill a Kill. Just all the aggression because Armin's so not the aggressive type. And then like Hanji, Hanji has to be, I'm starting to get sweaty again because I'm getting excited. Sorry, it, let me know if this is too loud because the girl is overheating. Hanji would be in the world of Pokemon because of course Hanji would be in the world of Pokemon. And Levi is Levi. And so that's where all of Beyond the Northern Wall came from. Where we came up with the name was, I, I think I came, I came up with the name because I remember that when I'm watching Attack on Titan, this is, and I was like one of the rare few who's actually really keeping up with the manga, is that all the Titan attacks before they explain, so spoiler alert, before they explained what was going on with the Titans and the secret of the Titans, all the Titan attacks were coming up from the south, like the Battle of Shig Shiganshima, Shiganshim, whatever, wherever Aaron and Mikasa and Armin are from, Shigashabashalapata. Their battle was in the south, and then the Battle of Trost was from the southern inner wall. And so nothing's happening in the north. And I remember thinking, literally, what is beyond the northern wall? And so that's where the story came from. That's where our little introduction story or introduction um, video came from was that Hanji finds evidence that there is something 
beyond the northern wall. And so she takes, I said she, that was so wrong. Hanji is a they. They take a whole expedition to go explore beyond the northern wall. But when they pop over there, they lose like four of their squad because they just were really bad at keeping track of them. And that's where everyone gets lost in these anime worlds. Now, putting this set together was intense because we decided let's do all the anime worlds and we know nothing about cosplay. We did like one cosplay and now we're professionals, we're not. But this was the first time I sewed anything. So I got a sewing machine and I sewed the skirts for the Slice of Life, for the Gekken show, show whatever. <sighs> Nozaki-kun. Gekken. Gekken. I sewed those skirts and I was really excited because I it was like circle skirts are the easiest things to sew and I did it and I was so excited. And then um, everyone else was like planning. I remember Kim decided on, you know, a, a toned down version of the scouts, but still like sassy and still very iconic. And then so many people, like everyone delved into it. Everyone delved into their own cosplays. Everyone contributed into creating the props and the cosplays for this because we didn't have any any like iconic professionals who knew anything about cosplay at the time like we were all still learning cosplayers so we decided let's just pull all our efforts together and really work on this and beyond the northern wall was really a team effort choreographing and and putting that set together was intense because it, it was like a 40 minute set it was so hardcore we were split up we had so many different choreographers on the team contributed choreography to that set and we're building and and then here's the thing we're building this whole set and i'm reaching out to ax and we're not getting any response for ax we're not hearing that we're going to come back at all so this was when me and somebody started to be like oh no what do we do so we're like we can't be putting this much effort into a performance and then we never get to perform it so 